you know this SUV and you know what this brand is all about. It's the all-electric Tesla Model Y, and in this review, I'm going to tell you all about it. G'day, I'm Matt. This is the Tesla Model Y, the electric SUV that's going to be right for a lot of families out there. And it's pretty good value for money too. I'm going to tell you all about it in this review, so please do stay tuned. And if you are enjoying what you're seeing, if you haven't already, like and subscribe. It helps a lot. Hit the bell icon so you can keep up to date with everything I'm doing. Trying to do two reviews a week. Man, it's busy. I hope you're enjoying what you're seeing though. Tesla prices are always changing. That comes down to the shipping costs at the time, currency conversions, and also the legislative decisions that are being made in Australian government. So depending on which state you live in, you'll pay a different price because there might be different incentives available to you if you are buying an electric vehicle. So make sure you check Tesla's website if you are considering a Model Y and what it might cost you for where you live. Now, at the time of filming, I'm showing you the prices for each of these two different versions of the Model Y. This one here is the base version, the rear wheel drive, and it lists at about $70,000 or thereabouts uh, for the entry level version, which I don't think is too bad considering what it's got. And then there's the all wheel drive dual motor performance model, which has a lot going for it, including plenty of extra power and torque, and it, will cost you a little bit more. It's almost a hundred grand. So you're gonna to have to want it to be able to justify the extra price. If you're wondering what you get as standard across the entire range, well, you get a big 15 inch touchscreen media system. You get a full glass roof inside, a full vegan interior. So no leather used whatsoever. There's also adaptive LED lighting. So it'll adjust the high beam for you and also adjust where the light shines, which is pretty neat. And then you've got 19 inch alloy wheels, although these ones on this car are 20s they're optional extras inside you also get a heated steering wheel heated front seats heated rear seats and climate control air conditioning so it's a very well specified car for those who live in really hot climates or really cold climates too if you're wondering how you can pick the performance model in traffic compared to the base model well it's got bigger wheels they're 21s as standard it sits lower to the ground and it has a carbon lip spoiler on the boot lid that's about it if you're looking to spend between seventy dollars and $100,000 on an electric car, then there are so many options available to you, including this one and including another Tesla, the Tesla Model 3. Now, it's a smaller sedan model, and if that's what you want, if you don't need an SUV, if you don't have a family, or if you've got a small garage, it might just be a better car for you than this one. So what about other rivals that aren't Teslas? Well, there's the Kia EV6. I really like that car, and it's also got a new performance-oriented GT model, which is about on par with the top spec version of the Model Y. Very spacious SUV. SUV as well, very comfortable. I like it a lot. And then there's the Hyundai Ioniq 5, which is considered an SUV, but I actually think it looks like a really macho hatchback. I love the look of that car, love the interior too. I think it's a really impressive car, and there's a fast version of it coming soon too, the Ioniq 5N. And if you don't want that sort of boxy hatchback, if you want something that is a bit more streamlined like this, but you don't want a Tesla, then maybe you could look at the Hyundai Ioniq 6, a new electrified streamliner from that brand. Now, it is sleek and very, very efficient efficient and if efficiency matters to you it could be a nice option let me know which you choose in the comments below the model y is actually a bit bigger than it looks it's 4.7 meters nose to tail which means this isn't a small suv not by any stretch of the imagination it's got to be big to fit all that battery pack underneath the floor electric motors don't take up much space but the battery sure does it is a very practical car i'll show you the inside in a sec but i also want to call out that it's got not one but two boots we'll start at the back one let's have a look the traditional boot at the back end of the Tesla offers 854 litres of cargo capacity according to the brand. Part of that big number is this massive underfloor storage area as well. You can put heaps of stuff in there too. No Tesla comes with a spare wheel though, which could be a concern for you depending on where you live. If you are prone to getting flat tyres, this might not be the right car for you. If you get a flat in a Tesla, you have to call the service center and they'll either send out a tow truck to tow your vehicle in or send out a spare wheel for you. So not fantastic in that regard. The other boot, 
is a fruit. That's what I call it, although Tesla calls it a frunk or front trunk. And it offers you an extra 117 liters of cargo capacity, which is very handy. Great for putting your shopping or your wet swimming gear in. Nice. If you like simplicity, you are gonna like the interior of the Tesla Model Y because it is a very bare bones place. Now, bare bones might seem like it's being a little bit rough on the interior because it does have some luxury feel to it, but it does have not very much going on in here apart from this massive screen. So that's your control center for everything you need to do with the car. There's a lot to go through on this screen. So you've got no Apple CarPlay and no Android Auto, which could be a deal breaker for some people who rely on their phone a lot. Instead, you have to use Bluetooth connectivity to connect your phone to this car. And there's a bunch of different apps and stuff on the screen so you can still listen to podcasts and you can still actually go on Spotify or tune in radio and choose what you want to listen to live which is pretty cool. It's an interesting way of approaching it because you don't necessarily need to have Apple CarPlay because you've got all this onboard tech built in. There's a bunch of different things on the screen that are available to you. Some of them are a bit gimmicky um, like the uh, whoopee cushion sound effect thing. Uh, there's also a romance screen or a sketch pad. All of that might seem fun and it might be a good way to waste time while you're charging the car, but I'd probably be just sitting on my phone anyway. There's also video games if you want to play games while you're waiting and you can access the charging network through this screen so it can show you where your nearest charging locations are, which is a nice thing to have at a glance. It also lists the pricing for the charging at those supercharger locations. I do find that you do have to take your eyes off the road quite a bit with this screen. So the Speedo is here, for instance. There's no Speedo binnacle in front of the driver, um, and that can be a little bit hard to get used to but you do get used to it over time. The other thing I would say is that I would like to see a bigger icon for the battery range remaining. Um, yes, it is there and you can show it on a different screen, but uh, it's kind of like a phone. You wanna know how much battery you've got left. It's more important in a car, arguably. Now, when it comes to phones and charging, there are two wireless chargers here, which is very nice to see. Storage is excellent. There's a massive storage caddy down here. You've got big cup holders as well. You've got a big center console bin. You've got big door pockets, which are lined, which I like. And then you can also open the glove box by going through the screen. Let me just show you here if I can find where that control is there. Yeah, glove box through the screen. Seems a bit overkill. Um, also, if you want to adjust the steering wheel, you have to do that through the screen as well. So you use the controller on this side of the steering wheel to put it in or out or up or down. Um, and you can save it based on profiles. So you can set up a profile for you and a partner. Um, you can download the app to your phone and then you've both got access to the car or you can use the key card as well. It's a comfortable space in here too. These seats are pretty comfortable. They're electrically adjustable. They're heated as well. The steering wheel's heated too. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll know I'm going to whinge about the fact that everything's through the screen, including the air conditioning controls. And you do have to go through a screen to adjust the fan and you have to adjust the actual direction of the thing by pressing the screen. And if you're driving along and uh, just, you know, not really concentrating on what's happening in front of you, concentrating on the screen instead, could be a safety concern. Though this car is super safe. I'll tell you more about that soon. Let's check out the back seat. If you've got a family, this could be the right car for you because there is heaps of space back here. This is a very roomy SUV. This seat is set for my driving position. I'm 182 centimeters or six foot tall. I've got lots of knee room, lots of foot room. In fact, heaps of foot room and plenty of headroom too. Now, one thing I will say is that this glass roof on a really hot day can still let some heat through. Um, and if you're sensitive to the heat, then you might want to keep that in mind. There are directional air vents down here for you to adjust the air to the back seats. You just need to get the driver to actually turn them on, which is a little annoying. Now you've got mat pockets on the seat backs. You've got a nice flat seat base, a really flat floor because it's a skateboard architecture, remember? So it's just a battery pack underneath, no transmission tunnel interference. So lots of leg room in between the seats. There's also a little flippy armrest down here with 
two cup holders, which is nice. And there's also um, Isofix child seat anchor points in the outboard seats, three top tether points too. So a family will be very happy back here. And if your kids aren't in car seats, there are heated seats in the back as well. But again, there's no button to actually turn the heated seats on. You have to get someone in the front to do it for you, which might be a little bit annoying. One more thing, there are two USB-C ports back here to keep those in the back happy and charged up. Nothing under the bonnet apart from extra space and a spot to fill up your washer fluid because all the electric hardware is packaged in under this black plastic shield. And this version has a 60 kilowatt hour battery pack under the floor of the car and it's got a rear motor and it's got up to 220 kilowatts of power, which is quite a bit. And the range is about 455 kilometers. That's based on the WLTP standard. So it's got enough to do the job. That performance model has an extra motor at the front axle for a total combined output of 393 kilowatts, which is heaps. There's also a bigger battery pack, 79 kilowatt hours, and that means that you get a longer driving range, more than 500 kilometers. So you are getting your money's worth if you choose the performance. And if you're wondering about naught to 100 times, well, the performance has more performance, 3.7 seconds, 0 to 100, which is bloody quick. And then there's this one, which is the rear wheel drive, which does 6.9 seconds. Still respectable, still pretty quick. So what's it like to drive? Well, it'd be a cop out to say that it's like an electric car to drive, but it's like an electric car to drive because it is, it's got that same effortless torque when you do put your foot down you will just push away with plenty of grunt it's very very quick obviously rear motor so it's rear wheel drive it's got plenty of pulling power i haven't had any issues with traction even in the wet as well so it does a pretty good job of getting the grunt to the ground the steering of the Model Y is accurate. It's pretty quick to turn as well. So when you do turn the wheel, the whole car moves quite accurately when you do that. But also it isn't uh, the lightest steering. It can be a little bit heavy. And also it's got a pretty big turning circle. So if you do have to do a lot of U-turns in tight streets or three-point turns, they might end up being five-point turns. There's been a lot of complaints made about the suspension of the Model Y. If you read or watch any other reviews, you will see that a lot of people have said that the ride is quite firm, and it is. Um, these 20 inch optional wheels with low profile tires, I mean, the 19s aren't gonna be that much better, um, and it is quite a fierce ride at times. You do notice a lot of the bumps and lumps in the road surface. And you also hear quite a lot of what's going on underneath the car too, which exacerbates that firmness in your mind, I think. So you can hear it now, it's just pitter-patter, pitter-patter, pitter-patter over all these little lumps and bumps and marks on the road surface. And if you live in a place like I do with lots of lumps and bumps on the surface, it might get a little bit annoying. It does take a little while to get used to the controls of this car, like the shifter being on a stalk and also the cruise control being on the same stalk. Um, and also, the, like I said, that speedo being in the wrong spot, the wrong spot traditionally at least, uh, is a bit annoying. But all of it you do get used to and you do get used to it pretty quickly. It's just whether you can live with having to do so much through the screen that might determine whether it's gonna be the right car for you. EVs are just like petrol and diesel cars when it comes to the official combined cycle figure. And that means that the lower the number, the better. So we're not talking liters per 100 Ks when it comes to EVs though. We're talking kilowatt hours per 100 Ks. And for the rear wheel drive version of the Model Y, that figure is 13.4 kilowatt hours per 100, which is very low. It's quite impressive, in fact, at least on paper. And then there's the performance model, which adds an extra motor. It's heavier and it's more about performance. And its claimed figure is 15.3 kilowatt hours per 100. That's still very efficient. A lot of that comes down to the aerodynamic efficiency of this car as well. If you're wondering what I've seen across a mix of driving, which is what the official combined cycle figure is supposed to be, 
a mix of different driving scenarios and not all just showing your friends how fast your EV is, well, it's on your screen now. And I was pretty impressed with that, to be honest. And this is a efficient EV. There's no question about that. The Tesla Model Y scored the maximum five-star ANCAP safety rating in 2022 when it was also labeled ANCAP's top safety performer. That means it scored the best across the four criteria that ANCAP judges cars against. So it's very safe and it's got all the technology that you would expect. Autonomous emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist and junction detection. There's also lane keeping assistance, active lane keeping, so it'll steer the car for you. And it's got blind spot monitoring. It doesn't have rear cross traffic alert though, which is a bit of a letdown. If you live on a street where you reverse onto the street, that could be a consideration for you. But speaking of reverse, it does have rear AEB. So if a pedestrian was to walk behind your car, it would jam on the brakes in theory. It's got a surround view camera and all around parking sensors as well. So it will be pretty easy to park even though it is a pretty big car. And inside there are seven airbags, dual front, front side, full length curtain, and front center airbag to stop head clashes in the event of a side impact. Oh, and did you know it doesn't have frames on the windows? It's pretty cool. This is where Tesla seems a little bit behind the times, at least in Australian terms, because it offers a four year, 80,000 kilometer warranty, which is about a year and infinite kilometers worse than most of its rivals in this country, where five years unlimited kilometers is the standard. When it comes to battery warranty, it's an eight year plan, no matter which version you choose, and that's for the battery and the drive unit. But you have to choose carefully because it's 160,000 kilometer cap for the rear wheel drive version or 192,000 kilometers if you choose the all wheel drive model. And when it comes to service intervals, the computer will tell you if it needs anything seen to. There's also Tesla DIY guides. So on their website, there's a number of different articles on things that you can tinker with. Just make sure that you don't void your warranty when you do that. It's so easy to see why people would choose the Tesla Model Y as their EV family SUV. It's very spacious, very practical, very safe, and very well priced, I reckon. I think it's got plenty of equipment for your cash, and it's also got a charging network at your doorstep, essentially. There's plenty of superchargers out there. Tell me what you think in the comments section below. Would you choose a Model Y or would you choose something different? I'd love to know your thoughts. And also, I'm loving the banter in the comments, so please keep it going. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.